A great friend of ours, uh, someone who is so important to the conservative movement, uh, U.S. Senator Ted Cruz uh, joining us now. And Senator Cruz, first off, two weeks out, you know, less than two weeks out before your election. Uh, so I want to thank you for taking the time to speak to our listeners all over the country. We have a very, very serious fight right now in Texas. I'm in the middle of a 53-stop bus tour all over the state of Texas, was just uh, down in the Rio Grande Valley, was in McAllen last night, was in Harlingen this morning, driving to Rio Grande City, and then to Laredo today. We've been in East Texas, West Texas, every part of the state, and, and we are fighting vote for vote, one vote at a time. And, and the reason is simple, which is that Chuck Schumer has been explicit that I'm his number one target in the country. And Schumer and George Soros are flooding the state with cash. They are spending over $100 million trying to beat me. You turn on every TV, and every other ad is an attack ad slamming me. They are flooding the state with cash. And we have had multiple polls. We've had over a dozen polls in the last month that show this is a one-point race or a two-point race or a three-point race, which is why they're investing so much money and, and we're getting just massively outspent. I will say it to you, uh, Senator. I was in outside uh, Dallas at a event at Prestonwood Baptist Church on these very kind of issues. I know Jack Graham is a good friend of yours and, and a supporter. And, uh, you know, I was speaking out and we were talking about this very issue about how the left is targeting races all around the country. And and I said your senator here in Texas is the, is the scalp they want, even if they lose the general election. Uh, by taking out Ted Cruz. It's infuriating that so many people get elected to the Senate and they promise great things, and then they get there and they just get sucked in uh, by leadership. They get sucked in by the swamp, and within a year or two, they're unrecognizable. And, and you know, it, it is unfortunate, but there are only a, hand people, a handful of people in the Senate who have backbone, who have guts, who will stand and fight, who will fight for conservative principles. And that's a big part of the reason why, if you look nationally, if you are a hardcore partisan Democrat, after Donald Trump, there is nobody on planet Earth you want to beat more than me. And so every left-wing Democrat in New York and Chicago and San Francisco, they go online and they give millions of dollars to my Democrat opponent. My opponent has been statewide on TV for over four months. I just went up on TV about three weeks ago. So we're getting massively outspent. And I got to tell you, Jordan, this race is going to come down to a simple binary question. If we raise enough money to communicate to the voters where they can hear my record and my opponent's record, we'll win. Yeah. But if we don't, we will lose because $100 million, my opponent is a hard left radical Democrat. His voting record was 100 percent with Nancy Pelosi. He's voted for open borders over and over again. He's voted against Israel over and over again. He said he wishes the Second Amendment had never been written, and yet he's desperately trying to hide from that record, just like Kamala Harris. And with $100 million, we were just looking at polling number numbers. There are a substantial number of Texans who still think the guy is moderate, despite the fact that he votes 100 percent with Nancy Pelosi. And that's simply a money differential. But it's dangerous because if they continue to think that, he could end up winning. And, and once he wins, there's no going back. Yeah, I mean, because uh, Senator Cruz, he I, when I was there, and so I was only there for one night, but I had the local news on. Uh, they'd interviewed you, and then they showed an interview with him. And they asked him about, uh, you know, Trump and this issue of, uh, you know, how are you talking to Trump voters and why would they vote for Trump but also you? And, and he had this answer, which, of course, he knows is not right uh, because he said, you know, People should be just voting for what's best for Texas, and that's it. Well, it's great. And obviously, that's your number one priority as a senator. You talk about a lot of national issues. We love that you do that because all senators need to be involved in uh, and are involved in more than just what's happening in their state. But their state is their priority, of course. But he said you could do that, and it wouldn't necessarily hurt Donald Trump. But then I think about it, Ted. I think, well, if you have an unfriendly Senate, Donald Trump can't get people through the confirmation process. So you know who we end up with then? As we've talked about, more of these kind of candidates that are compromise appointments that usually turn into enemies of the sitting president that appointed them. Well, there's a reason Donald Trump has endorsed my campaign. There's a reason that Trump and I did a teletown hall 
just this week, we had over a million Texans that we reached out to to be part of the Teletown Hall because if and when Trump is reelected, he can't accomplish a fraction of what needs to be done without a Republican Senate and without strong conservative leaders in that Republican Senate. You know, when Trump was president the first time, I was by far his strongest ally in the U.S. Senate. If and when he's reelected in November, I will again be his strongest ally in the U.S. Senate. But the left wants to take me out because there just aren't many senators who actually stand and fight, who lead, who can go and take it to the Democrats, take it to their witnesses, take it to Alejandro Mayorkas, take it to Merrick Garland, lay out the case and do so with a smile. There are few things that terrify the left more than a happy warrior who believes in freedom, believes in the Constitution, is, is proud to defend religious liberty, is proud to defend people of faith, to defend Christians, and is not scared, is not embarrassed. Look, in Texas, Schumer and Soros are spending over $40 million just on abortion. They are the party of abortion. And again, the polls show this as a one, two, or three-point race. If they win in Texas, simply being for abortion in all circumstances with no limits whatsoever, Kamala Harris just did an interview where she was asked, would you even allow religious liberty exceptions for abortion? She said, no, why would I do that? So she's talking about forcing Catholic hospitals and evangelical doctors to perform abortions. That's how radical they've gotten. And if that message were to win in Texas, the consequences nationally for people of faith, for the pro-life movement, for religious liberty, for believers would be devastating. For the pro-Israel movement, I have been for 12 years the strongest defender of Israel in the Senate. My opponent consistently opposes Israel, has voted against military aid to Israel, has supported giving $100 billion to Iran. If if we were to lose, the consequences are significant. And Logan, too, when we have on active politicians, we always want to make yeah. sure everybody knows, even though we're very close with Ted, he's worked so hard on so many issues with us. I go back to, you know, Saeed Abedini kneeling down before the White House and things like with us. Yeah, he's definitely been a friend. And we did want to let everyone know, just for clarity, that we that we you just heard from Ted Cruz. We have reached out to his uh, opponent, Congressman uh, Con, uh, Colin Allred's campaign about sharing his vision uh, for Texas on our broadcast. We'll make sure that that's clear as well.